Hi everyone, my name is Pam Hetrick. I am a certified nurse midwife. And first and foremost, I would like to take this opportunity to congratulate you on your upcoming journey to parenthood. What an exciting time in your life this is. So many mixed emotions, so many what do I do, what should I do, who should I go to, what hospital should I give birth at. I can imagine all of these questions are swirling through your head. So today I'm going to talk about... Um, your options and birth providers because it is very confusing um, and we just don't want you to get so far into your journey and say whoa 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 this provider and I aren't um, clicking we're not seeing eye to eye they're not listening to me about my philosophy of how I want my birth to go um, and so many of times uh, midwives will have patients that transfer to us at 32 weeks when they feel that their provider is maybe a little bit too intervention happy or um, potentially they're just not being told uh, the rationales for some of the interventions that the provider is um, recommending. So always first and foremost know that you are in the driver's seat. Um, a birth is a one-time event. It's like a wedding day. You wouldn't have a complete stranger or potentially your mother-in-law. Um, making all the plans for you. So you are an important person in this journey and you deserve to know what your choices are and what the recommendations are. And the biggest thing is um, more of the why we are recommending something. So um, I have provided care to uh, females in labor um, and all sorts of in between in the office um, for the past 18, 18 or 19 years, I'm losing track and have had the um, pleasure of welcoming um, into my hands about 1,810 births. So I've been in um, lower risk practices. Um, my name might sound familiar from Lake West and I am back at university hospitals taking um, care of moderate risk uh, individuals, moderate to high risk individuals, um, and also doing some leadership. So I'm super excited today to be talking to you about your care provider, what your options are, and understanding what each um, person does. So first I'm going to start out with physician care. Physicians um, so well needed in this field for their expertise um, in helping um, women who might risk out of midwifery care or a woman who decides that she wants uh, a physician to take care of her. Typically, every hospital has a physician that's in-house 24-7. So even if your physician is not present, there's always somebody in the hospital that can quickly intervene um, if the baby was showing signs of needing to come out before that provider was there, either um, with vacuum forceps or a cesarean section. Um, they are medically trained um, to take care of all sorts of conditions um, during the pregnancy. Um, there's different levels of care that physicians work at. Um, there's level one facilities, which means that they take care of the lowest risk female um, and also newborn. So many of the um, hospitals in the Lake County area, um, Lake West, TriPoint, Giaga, um, do provide level one care and then you have something called level three care which basically means we can take care of patients um, who have all sorts of medical complications including um, uncontrolled high blood pressure at the end of pregnancy, insulin dependent diabetes, twins, um, a myriad of um, maternal and fetal medical conditions that makes uh, the patient or their baby at risk for needing additional hands-on care at a higher uh, level of care facility. So um, we very um, uh, frequently will get patients that start off for low risk care that then develop some risk factors during the pregnancy and it is um, determined that it is a better fit for um, 
this patient to come down to um, either Hillcrest or Metro or University Hospitals for care. So a physician care, they would take care of both low risk and high risk individuals. There's not many around here that are birthing all of um, their own patients. They, it usually is in a shared group, um, but the groups um, besides the big tertiary care centers are fairly um, smaller, so you can get to meet all of the physicians that are present um, in that practice for when you go into the hospital to birth. Midwives. So I am one of them, obviously. I am a certified nurse midwife, and there is a lot of other midwives in the area um, that are not certified nurse midwives that I'd like to just kind of dive in and tell you what the difference is between a certified nurse midwife versus a certified midwife versus a certified professional midwife and how they're viewed legally um, and governmentally in the state of Ohio. So currently only certified nurse midwives are um, recognized in the state of Ohio for not only um, governmental reasons, meaning that um, we have a governing body, the Ohio Board of Nursing, who makes sure that we are practicing within our scope of care, um, which means that somebody who develops a higher risk um, condition during their pregnancy, we would have collaborative services, meaning that we can um, speak to a physician and uh, develop a plan of care and making sure that the patient or the baby um, is appropriate to stay into midwifery care um, at one of the hospitals. Currently around um, the Cleveland area, um, certified nurse midwives practice at Giaga, Portage, um, Hillcrest, UH main campus, um, uh, Fairview, um, and soon to be um, these babies won't have the uh, honor of being one of our first births at Ahuja, but there will be a strong midwifery presence at Ahuja Medical Center. So technically, a certified nurse midwife was once in, in their day, and they can be a male, um, which confuses people a lot more because they'll say like, well, what do you call a male midwife? And, you know, the root of the word um, midwife means with woman, so you can be any gender, um, sex, uh, and um, still be called a midwife because it's truly believing that that person is with woman through their transition in um, life. But we all started as nurses, so all of us um, are bachelor's prepared um, nurses that went back to school to obtain our master's of science in nursing. And we have a uh, collaborative relationship, conditions that we agree upon that we can independently um, manage versus something that we need to collaboratively manage, um, an at-risk condition, or we decide if the care is best served with one of our physicians who are able to take care of women at risk. Um, so we are the only midwives that are... Um, recognized in the state of Ohio. Um, so we have a scope of practice. We have a board that we report to for any sort of um, disciplinary issues. If those come up, there are fur and few between, um, but we legally can prescribe medications um, for a myriad of um, reasons, infections, birth control, hemorrhage, um, antibiotics in labor, an epidural if the patient wants. Um, so many of times we hear two very common threads. The first one is, oh, you're having a midwife, you're going to deliver at home. And although that is true that we do have certified nurse midwives in our area now providing care at home for home birth, those midwives are also legally in the state of Ohio allowed to administer medication at home. Um, should it be something for a postpartum hemorrhage or antibiotics in case the mom is group B strep positive. Um, it, so they are allowed to, we are allowed to expand um, our scope to prescribing medications, which you know, at home, um, if a hemorrhage happens, um, thank goodness that 
certified nurse midwives can be there to attend the birth and give the appropriate medication should a hemorrhage occur. The other thing that we hear is, oh, you're having a midwife, so that means you have to go natural, right? And the biggest thing is, is that our job is to inform you of all of the options that are available for you to make the best decision for you and your baby. So, you know, I tell patients all the time, many of my patients come in knowing that they want an epidural, knowing that they want an induction, and that's fine. What they find important is that um, midwives are the, um, they're the, I always call them the guardian angels for birth, um, making sure that everything is okay and that the family is aware of their options. There are other midwives in Ohio um, that are not um, regulated through the state um, or licensed or recognized through the state um, that do provide home birth um, in the area. Um, and those are important questions to ask um, is that they legally cannot uh, administer, prescribe or administer medication in the state of Ohio. So what would they do in the case of a hemorrhage? How do they repair a um, laceration that occurs during birth under local anesthesia um, if, they are, if they cannot uh, legally carry medications? Um, the other midwives, the certified professional midwives or the certified midwives or somebody who calls themselves a midwife without any sort of formal training um, does not have a collaborative relationship with a physician. Um, and and uh, if there was some reason that you needed to be transferred into the hospital system, um, they do not have an agreement or a relationship with a physician. So you would basically get whoever is on call in case there was a transfer that needed um, to come in. Um, many of our certified nurse midwives who are attending births in Cleveland are coming in should uh, an instance occur, whether it's the patient saying, um, I need pain management, um, or I just feel in my gut that I need to go to the hospital. Um, many of the uh, outside um, community midwives will collaborate with us to be able to do a smooth transition of care into the hospital. Um, that isn't the way that it goes for all the other midwives who are practicing. Um, in the state of Ohio. So it's something to consider. Um, it's something to ask whoever you're seeing, um, you know, what is your cesarean section rate? What is your transfer in rate? What is your epidural rate? You can ask people those questions. And if they don't know it, it should be a red flag. Um, midwives, um, we heavily rely on our statistics to show that we are providing safe um, and evidence-based care. Um, we strongly have amazing relationships with physicians um, in, the, in our practices because we rely on them when a care gets uh, a little bit out of our scope or comfort zone, um, or we have an emergency that we need to know that we have great backup and a great collaborative uh, relationship that gives the patient the best birth outcomes. Um, the other team member um, that I'd like to bring into this is maternal fetal medicine because sometimes whether you're seeing a physician or a midwife, we might recommend, hey, you need to have a visit with maternal fetal medicine. Those are our high risk docs. A lot of times patients will go, ah, I have to see somebody high risk. Sometimes it's just for a consult, just to say, this is what we've identified either with the mom or the baby. And how would you write the recipe? I always say they write the recipe down for us to follow um, in regards to fetal surveillance, um, how frequently we should be doing ultrasounds, um, when should delivery occur, when should we start antenatal testing, so testing in the office to provide best outcomes for moms and babies. So always, no matter who you're seeing, you are... Um, I hope you have an amazing experience and I hope you have a safe birth and a beautiful, healthy baby. Um, and um, our biggest thing is that you um, feel that you are heard and that you are an important member of your birth team and that you understand interventions on why people are recommending things. So um, trust your mommy gut. 
it really kicks in even before um, birth um, that if something doesn't seem right and you're not getting the answers from your care provider that you have chosen, it is, um, it's up to you to make those decisions that if you need to sever that relationship and find another provider. But um, it's been a pleasure talking to you guys. I could talk about birth um, <laughs> all day long. It was supposed to be 10 minutes, but I'm at 15 minutes and 30 seconds. So I'm going to sign off and I hope um, that you've enjoyed this talk. Take care.